time it is. DJ Ready Real. Huh. Young Prince with the soul of Napoleon. I see art like I know the custodian. At the Gagosian, and my hoe is Cambodian. While I'm smoking, I send her to the stove for some osium. Huh. If I ain't hot, you must be smoking that opium. Or that shit, heck the gay smoking them. Huh. And that Impala, but ain't nobody dope as him. So hip hop, it's time to hold a symposium. Or a seminar with no pump. Alright, Sean Malone here with Cage Authority, making a stop here at Octagon MMA in the heart of Dallas, Texas, with the head fight coach, Coach Safe all right, Coach, you've had a tremendous run here as of recently with your fight team. I mean, one of the most active fight teams and one of the highest level cards. Um, just kind of tell the, tell the fans at home, like, what has Octagon MMA been doing in the last couple of months? You guys have been on a tremendous run. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been a really busy, busy time. Uh, we had 13 fights since June 20th. Uh, starting with Clayton Mize, and Legacy, all the way up until uh, Sean's fight against uh, Paul Thiago um, on Saturday in Brazil. Uh, we've been blessed, you know, we won 12 of the 13 fights. Um, anytime that you can have a winning percentage like that, it's something to be really excited about. Um, the guys just been working super, super hard. Uh, really, the the, the hard part has just been kind of coordinating everything. We had three UFC fights in four weeks. Um, you know, I had to, we had to go to Tulsa, and then we had Damon took a fight on seven days' notice, um, and we had to go to Sacramento. And he was originally supposed to go with us to Brazil. So it's just been uh, it's just been crazy. But you know, now we have a little bit of a break and kind of stop for a second and just looking back on it and. Uh, just really, really proud of the guys and what they've accomplished. Just all their hard work just kind of showed um, for them to, to win that many fights. And, and um, what can we say? It's an exciting time. Well, I mean, not just that, but you also have two champions now in the house with, uh, with Evan Martinez and, and, uh, and Damon Jackson, who, who won the, the Legacy Featherweight. Yeah. I mean, how, how, is, how difficult is it to kind of coordinate that while maintaining a fight team, coaching, and having to fly all over across the, the, the world, in essence? I mean, and, and how important is the, the team's, I guess, structural fortitude to be able to, to function when you've got so many guys fighting at so many different levels? Well, I've got to credit them. Um, you know, I've got so many guys that you know, now are veterans, you know, have 12, 13, 15 fights. They, they run practice. Um, you right now, they run practice. Uh, you know, now that we have three guys in the UFC, and, you know, we have 12, 13 guys or more in legacy. Uh, these guys have a lot of experience and you know they've been around the game. I mean, all every one of them could coach somewhere at a gym. You know, they have tons of experience and they all bring something to the table. Yeah, no. So uh, when I leave, you know, I just coordinate with them and try to stay in touch with everybody and kind of come up with a schedule and, and we have a wrestling coach and we have coach up top you know, uh, the program. Um, and it, you know it's been a challenge but it's it's a good challenge to have. And uh, it's great that I can count on them um, to come through when I'm not around. And I just think it's one of those things that everybody kind of you know, bands together to get it done. Um, and uh, it wasn't easy, but it worked out. Well, I mean, in the, in the short time you guys have kind of formulated the Octagon fight team, again, it's been tremendous success. Uh, there's a lot of that playing in with the, cal the character of the guys that you bring into the fight team. I know you guys are pretty selective on who you're allowed to represent Octagon MMA and, and how important is it to have the right the right mindset and the right character to be a part of this, this fight team? I think that's a great question. Um, you know it's amazing these guys are you know becoming stars and you know they're in the UFC but they just act the same as they did from day one. You know from when they were amateurs and, you know, Matt Hobart have had him from the amateur days and uh, he's the exact same guy. You know, you know, there's no arrogance here. It's, we have no. Don't let the hype get to him or anything. No, of that nature. we don't at all. Uh, we kind of have an open door policy as far as letting people come and try out. And then, um, you know, it's just a really good energy, synergy between everybody. And there's no egos here. And I think you need that because in fighting, the minute you start getting arrogant, bad yeah. things tend to happen. Right. So uh, yeah, we've been very blessed. Well, you know, it's something you said to me uh, in the past is that the guys that are in the UFC aren't the guys that are, are, are talking the most shit out there on, on Insta, you know, on Twitter and on Facebook. It's the guys who are respectful of the sport and of one another. Um, and that's something that, I know that's something you kind of foster here 
with an octagon in the main. And how important is that to become a complete fighter? I think that, uh, you know, it's so funny that my experience of doing this, you know, um, really now, almost 10 years, since 2006, really full time. Uh, Everybody who's at the highest level are the nicest guys. Uh, I always use George and Pierre, for example. He's the nicest human beings I've ever met. Uh, Rashad Evans, such a genuine good guy. And those guys are both champions at the highest level. Uh, you know, it just seems to kind of be karma or whatever you want to say. Is people who represent themselves well and have a good energy about them and are very humble always go far because I think this sport will humble you at some point, somehow, some way. And um, I think good things happen to good people. I've always said that. So the guys that have made it to that level, uh, they put in so much work uh, and, and they deserve it. You know, and I love to see those guys shine and have that moment and have that dream. Um, you know, there's nothing more rewarding than that as a coach. Yeah, so, I mean, again, you're coming off of a, a tremendous schedule here. Um, I mean, what's next for Octagon MMA? Are you guys planning to, to take some time off, kind of slow things down a little bit, or just keep going full steam ahead? Uh, you know, now with three guys in the UFC, you know, whenever the UFC calls, um, we, we have not said no to the UFC. We said no to one fight, I think, out of eight or nine fights that they offered and that was on two weeks notice. Um, all the guys have had, you know, Sean took a super hard fight against Afi Natal on eight days notice. Damon, uh, huge win over Leonard Garcia. Didn't even get to enjoy it. Turned right back around. Has to fight Yancy yeah, yeah. Medeiros on uh, pay-per-view. Uh, seven, eight days notice. Um, you know, even Matt, you know, having to fight Pedro Munoz in Brazil. Um, but these guys are resilient. You know, Matt came back and dominated. Aaron Phillips, who's a very tough opponent in Tulsa. Uh, Sean with, you know, a big win over Paul Tiago, who, you know, at one time was the number five welterweight with wins over uh, Mike Swift. In Brazil. And Josh Koscheck in Brasilia, you know, which was uh, his hometown. Um, you know, and, and, and I know Damon will do the same. I mean, these guys are, they just, they never stop working, you know, I mean, as a coach, that's what you want. You want guys that just that are, that are driven, guys that are motivated. Um, they're always here. You know, Sean's running practice right now. Sean was here uh, Monday. Yeah. You know, we flew back in and he came to the gym. Damon won the legacy belt. He was here the next morning helping Matt get ready uh, to fight Aaron Phillips in Tulsa. So that's just kind of um, you know, everybody counts here. And and you know, Evan Martinez just won his belt. And uh, he's another up and coming guy, and all the all, you know, all the UFC guys are helping him get ready. So it doesn't matter if you're you know a low level pro or if you're fighting for a bell or if you're fighting in the UFC. We just kind of have a core belief that everybody has to be at practice. I mean, it just doesn't matter if you have a fight coming up or if you don't. Uh, practice is mandatory. So I think that kind of just keeps everything going. And you know, when you have that many high level guys in the room. Good things happen. Well, I mean, I think the, the results speak for themselves. Um, Coach, I appreciate taking the time. As you can see, I got my sweat on today and got beat up pretty well. Sean's so, working hard in the gym. Uh, you know, I'm trying not, not to, to die here against some of these high level guys. So, again, Sean Malone, Cage Authority, Coach Safe, Altagon MMA. Again, appreciate Thank it. Very and much. You know, we, we look forward to bigger and better things from you guys. Thank you so much.